Hello again, physics friends. Today we are focusing on angular momentum and pointing out that the value of the angular momentum of an object depends on its, on, on your choice of origin. Um, in other words, where are you putting the origin for your position vector? That will impact the angular momentum. And this is not so surprising, right? Because the angular momentum we've seen before is defined to be the position vector to an object cross into the momentum um, of that object. So if you change the position vector um, or change the relative alignment between the position vector and the momentum, then the angular momentum will change. So here's, um, here's one example of what I mean. So let's imagine we have a coordinate system, x and y, and we have an object of mass m moving with a velocity v. So this object has a momentum that is pointing to the right. Okay. If we choose um, to have our origin, I'll choose this in blue, our first origin we'll put at the actual origin of our axes, and um, we'll call that origin 1. We also know that this momentum is defined as m times the velocity vector v. Okay. So in this case, we can write the angular momentum. Um, I'll call this L1, which means we are talking about the angular momentum relative to origin 1. Okay, And we can write that as R1 cross P. What is R1? Well, it's uh, the position vector from the origin out to the particle. Okay. And we can see that R1 cross P is going to be non-zero because R1 and P are neither, neither of them is, are zero and they are not parallel to each other. So the magnitude of L1 here um, is bigger than zero. Okay, And you can also show that the direction of L1 is into the page. And we see that because we have R1 like so. We have P straight to the right. And if you rotate R1 into P, that's a clockwise rotation. So that ends up being into the page. You can use a right hand rule for that too. Fingers along R1, curl your fingers in towards P, your thumb points into the page. Okay, but what if we chose a different origin? What if we chose our origin to be um, somewhere on that y-axis, or anywhere really, that is in line with the velocity vector. Okay. In that case, we have L2, which is the angular momentum relative to origin number 2. That would be R2 cross P, where R2 is a position vector from our second origin out to our particle. So now we have R2. Every time I say R2, I think Star Wars. R2, and we have P, and they are parallel. So that tells us immediately that the angular momentum is 0 because R2 is parallel to P. So the cross product of R2 and P is 0. Recall it, the magnitude of the cross product is proportional to the sine of the angle between those two vectors. Sine of 0 is 0, so this cross product gives us 0. So that's this main idea. Is, is, you know, the question, does this particle have an angular momentum? The answer is, well, it depends. Relative to some origins, yes, this particle will have angular momentum. Relative to other origins, no, the particle will have zero angular momentum. How about the linear momentum? Um, is linear momentum origin dependent? Think about that for a minute. Okay. Well, in this example, we changed the origin, but we did not change the momentum. So no, for a given frame of reference, you can. there's no reference to a specific origin when you talk about momentum. 
but the momentum is absolutely frame dependent, right? If we moved into a different inertial frame and that inertial frame was moving to the right at velocity v relative to our um, initial reference frame, then in that frame of reference, this particle would be at rest and would have no momentum. So the momentum is not dependent on your choice of origin, but it is dependent on your choice of reference frame. Okay. Okay. So in other words, once you choose a reference frame, that defines a momentum, but it does not define a um, angular momentum. You can always choose a different origin within that, or a different reference point within your frame of reference to calculate your angular momentum with respect to. Okay, so the bottom line here is that we, whenever we work on angular momentum problems, we always must specify the origin. So here's another example of this idea of angular momentum depending on the choice of origin. So consider this system where we have a star and a planet in orbit about that star, and let's say that that planet is orbiting in an ellipse, okay, with the star at a focus of the ellipse. We can ask the simple question, is the angular momentum of this planet conserved? So if we take the system to be the planet, and we just want to talk about the angular momentum of this point particle, this planet, is that angular momentum constant? And there's a couple ways that we could look at this, right? And of course, we need to first define our, our origin. So let's look at this two ways. First, let's take the origin to be the sun or the star, rather. Okay. And in that case, let's draw our position vector out to the planet. So we have a position vector, r, and we have a momentum vector, p, for the planet. Let's say it's moving in the counterclockwise um, direction. So we have an angular momentum, which is equal to r cross p. And as drawn here, r cross p is out of the page. Okay. We know in general that the speed of the planet changes relative to the star as the planet moves in its orbit. When the planet is far from the star, it moves slower than when the planet is close to the star. So p in magnitude is changing. R also is changing, right? When the planet is far from the star, R is big, and when the planet is close to the star, the magnitude of R is small. So when we try to assess whether the magnitude of the angular momentum is changing, we have two competing effects. We have R getting bigger and smaller, and when R is big, P is small, and when R is small, P is big. So it could be that those two balance each other in a way that keeps the angular momentum constant. So how, in fact, can we tell if there is um, going to be a change in angular momentum? Well, here we can appeal to Newton's second law for rotations, um, which I prefer to call the angular momentum principle. Right, we've already talked about this. This is saying if you want to change the angular momentum of your particle, you must apply a torque. And the torque, recall, is defined as the cross product of an applied force um, with a position vector and then the applied force. So if, if our object of interest um, is this planet, what forces are there on that planet? Well, we have this gravitational force by the star on the planet. And that gravitational force points from the planet to the star. Okay. But what do we know about r cross f? Well, we have a force in one direction, and we have a position vector in exactly the opposite direction. The angle between them is 180 degrees. So that tells us that there's no torque, because r cross f will be 0. So this tells us that although the speed of the planet is changing, there's no torque. And if there's no torque, then there can be no change of angular momentum. So is the angular momentum conserved? Yes, um, with an origin 
at the star. Okay. But is it always conserved? Does it depend on our choice of origin? Um, yeah, it depends on our choice of origin. So let's see why that is. So let's repeat the exercise, but instead of putting the origin at the star, let's just put the origin somewhere on the orbit, um, and we'll choose the point of closest approach to the star. Okay, that'll be our origin. In that case, our position vector will look something like this. We'll start at the origin, and we'll go all the way like so. We still have the linear momentum, same as it was before. And so we see in this snapshot of time, the uh, planet has a non-zero angular momentum. Right? We have L equals R cross P, and we can see here that the magnitude of L will not be zero. This planet has angular momentum. Okay? But look what happens sometime later. Okay? So sometime later, the planet has moved along in its orbit, and let's consider the moment when the planet is at our origin. Okay? So we define this purple dot to be our origin. It remains our origin over here. And by the time the planet makes it over there, now the momentum vector points um, in a new direction compared to before. How about the position vector? Well, the planet is at the origin, so the position vector is 0. So if the position vector is 0, then in this snapshot, L um, is 0. There's no angular momentum. So here, the angular momentum has changed, okay, um, which must mean that there's been a torque. So how come there's been a torque? I'll let you guys think about that. See if you can come up with an explanation of how we argued in this first case, there was no torque. Therefore, the angular momentum was constant. We've shown clearly in the second case, though, that the angular momentum goes from something that's not zero to zero at this instant. So there's clearly a change in angular momentum, so there must be a torque. How does that torque come about? As you think about where this torque is coming from, I'll just close with the main point, that you must specify the origin when you're talking about angular momentum. Otherwise, you can't even answer questions like, is the angular momentum of the planet conserved? Because it depends, as we see here, it depends on what you've chosen for your origin. That also implies that when you are solving problems, there can be a, um, a benefit to choosing a convenient origin. In particular, if you can choose an origin where the angular momentum is conserved, then it sometimes helps you um, solve problems. Okay, so think about why there's that torque. And then in a future video, I'll um, give you more examples of calculating angular momentum explicitly um, and quantitatively um, using different choices of origins for the same system. So that's it for now, um, but until next time, take care and be well.